Hello, and welcome to HelloWare Academy. My name is Mark Mortel, and I'll be your instructor today. Today, we are going to go over a few things regarding web forms and web-based application development using C Sharp. Um, one of the things that is has become really prominent in industry is a structuring within C Sharp called MVC. It can be used in C Sharp, it can be used in VB.net. It's just a model that you use so that you can have the benefit of making an application more supportable. It's also benefit, it also has its benefits in code reuse and overall just the design and um, supporting the application overall makes it so much more simply simpler by having the three tiered approach. So for those of you who don't know, MVC stands for Model View Controller. And the way MVC works is you have three tiers. There are, in structuring, in programming structuring, you have a tiered approach. There's in tiers, you have MVP patterns, which is Model View Presenter. You have MVC, which is what you'll hear about most right now, is which is Model View Controller. And the way MVC works, you have your model, you have your view, and you have your controller. Each of those are different layers of your application. And the layers are essentially different project files. So the way you're gonna reference them in your program is through assembly references. So the way it's gonna work is you're gonna start out by opening up a new project and you're simply going to right click the main project file and you can add a new project and they're using the if you're doing C-sharp, you can go into the C-sharp um, C -sharp options and you can add a new project, C-sharp library file. So that's going to be your project file and you can rename that. Um, I, I typically like to name mine if it's, if, say for example, if my application is a school app. So I'll have school app dot API, which is going to be your logic layer essentially that's the same as your model you can name it api.model you can uh, you can i mean school app.model you can name it school app dot um, api but essentially you want to name it something that you will know that that is your your logic layer your model so um the first part of your application the part that came when you just created the new project that's going to become your view that is going to be the layer of your application that your end users are going to directly interface with. That's where all of the GUIs are held. That's where all of the ASPX pages are held. That's where all the forms are held. held. If you're doing um, WinForms development, development, that's where all your forms will be, will be in that UI layer or your view. And last, you'll add another uh, class library which you will rename, I like to name mine DAL for Data Access Layer, DAO. A lot of people refer to it just as the DAO. So if your application is called School App, you would do schoolapp.dao. And so, once you have your three layers set up, you have, you have your UI layer, you have your model, which is your API layer, you have your, um, your controller, which is gonna be your DAO, that is going to be the, the core of how your application is structured. Now, what you're gonna do is, I like to use a NuGet package called NPOCO, and we can go into a, a little bit more into that um, <clears throat> a little bit later in this video, but essentially, NPOCO is an assembly, it's a NuGet package that allows you um, to reference the, the data, the, the DAO layer, without having to create all these extra classes, it, it essentially is the middleman that can grab data for you. So the next step in creating a new application, what I would do is add that NuGet package called NPOCO, and then we're gonna reference that not only in your, your DAO layer, you're gonna reference that in your UI layer, as well as your model. So as you start to create code, um, your query commands within NPOCO and your DAO layer. So your DAO layer is, is gonna have your select commands, your your get commands essentially. The code for the shorthand code for NPOCO grabbing data, which would essentially transpose to a select command, 
would be fetch. So you would reference the database db.fetch and then you can enter your where clause within the brackets of, um, of that method. So say for example if you're trying to grab all students or just grab all students where um, where first name equal uh, starts with L or something something along those lines. So you would do db.fetch and then when, within those parentheses within that method you can do your where clause where first name like such and such. So now that's going to remain in your data access layer and you can create a method which essentially um, a method which will run that command, run that uh, that NPOCO command. So you don't even have to go through the process of like back in the day we used to have to create a data set, you used to have to create a data source and then do all of this extra code just to create a SQL command to transpose data back and forth um, from the database to the code. Um, but now you can just do that db.fetch and that's going to stay in your data access layer. So now we're ready for our business logic, which, was, which is going to be in the model. All of your business logic is going to go in the model. Don't write any logic in the view. Don't write any logic in the, um, in the controller. And what you want to do is the controller is going to be as basic as possible. It's, it becomes really cumbersome for developers to come in after you and try to go in and if, if you have all this different logic, SQL logic in there um, when trying to grab data, you want to put all that logic in your model layer. That way the, the, the code is as basic as possible when it comes to your actual controller, the actual data access layer. So in your model you can write something like um, let's say you're trying to have an if condition and determine what condition a student will be selected versus what condition another type of student will be selected. Those types of, of statements, the if, the if then statements, um, your, your switch cases, all of that will be here in your business logic layer. And say for example you want to reference that in Coco to actually grab that data and pull it into that layer, all you're going to have to do is add that assembly reference into that class. Now that you have your logic set up, now that you have your data access layer set up, we're going to focus on the view. So now you're going to create your ASPX page. You may have one already in there, so it may be simply a matter of renaming that page. So you're going to go into the ASPX page. You can of course go into the markup and determine how you want that view to be, how you want it to, to look. You can arrange it. I typically like um, to utilize grids and tables. Uh, tables are really, really good in terms of making it more simple rather than having to write a whole bunch of code to figure out um, a whole bunch of CSS code and, and things to try to figure out how to format everything and you know the width and all that. So typically what I'll do is if I have um, multiple controls that I need to add, add to a web form. I'll go ahead and start by adding a table, then I'll add controls within that table, and then you can easily just uh, select one of the, the divisions within that table and drag it to the left or drag it to the right to kind of help you determine um, where that control should be on your form. And then you can, um, once you do that, you'll notice that you can hit markup if you right click that form and click view markup you can actually see the HTML so what you can even do is you can go in and modify that HTML code if you want some people what I typically like to do is do as much of the design as possible in the, in the, in the design view that way I can see what I'm doing rather than having to do everything in code and I'll use the code to make modifications to what has already been put in place so, when you're creating an application, you have your, I've, we've already gone over MVC, which is essentially your three-tiered structuring, which allows people to come in after your, your code or you to go in after somebody else's code and really make it more user, or more, more eye-friendly, more uh, supportable, 
and just easier to follow all around. You can actually take that project file. So say for example, you've already completed your application, you've created your UI layer, you've created your, your business logic layer, you've created your data access layer, and now you have another application that you want to utilize. You can really just drag and draw or copy over that, that data access layer, layer project file if it's interfacing with the same database and you can reuse that, that same data access layer in another project. Rather than having to rewrite all those commands all over again, rewrite those classes, it's all there for you now. So that's the beauty of MVC and of this three-tiered structuring uh, format. So one of the things that I wanted to go through, go over with you are master pages. With master pages, it's essentially going to be when you first start creating a project, you're gonna have something called a master page. And the master page is where essentially you're going to create the overall look of what your website, your web application is going to, the, the overall theme or, or view of the application. So what you can do is you can type in your, you can create your CSS, your style, you can create your CSS file, and rather than applying that same CSS file to each individual form, um, to each individual ASPX page or web form that you're creating, what you can do is drag that CSS file, that style, put it in the header of your master page, and automatically, every time you create a new master page, you can just um, click use master. When you add a new master page, you can select that master when you before you hit OK. And now the overall layout, the overall view, will mimic what's in your master page. So it really, really simplifies the overall process of having to go in and design each page. Whereas in the past, you may have had to, you may have gone the track of, of designing each individual page. What you can do is design that master page. And then at that point, at least the bulk of the basic design of your web, your web form will already be designed for you. So all you'll have to do is modify, say for example, just your the body of that page where you can add the tables, you can add your controls, you can add your text boxes, wh whichever you choose, but you choose, but at least the majority of that page will will be designed and you'll have the same theme. That way you won't have to go back and forth and and, and copy over that code. It just makes things so much simpler. So Overall, those are the basics of MVC. Um, of course, it can get way more in depth than that, but we just wanted to touch lightly on and give a give a basic explanation of what MVC is and how it works, what its benefit is, and how you can really utilize that to not only help your own programming and help your own applications become more supportable, but even to make that application just more supportable as you work in teams because when you're in the workforce you're going to have in most cases it's not going to be just you working on that application it's going to be uh, you and a team of people even if you are you know say for example the sole developer at your your company what i've seen i've been in a position like that in the workforce and there have been times when i've had to um, work with third-party consultants um, say for example if there's a project that needed to be done right away the company that I worked for, from time to time, they would hire um, third-party consultants, um, and having those structuring, that type of structuring in place, really made it easier for us to just kind of hit the ground running and reuse some of that same application. So, I hope you've enjoyed that um, short demo. I hope you have learned something and that you can start utilizing some of those practices in your own applications and become the best programmer that you can be. Thanks.